Hello and welcome to another episode of the Oxford Online Maths Club. My name's James and I'm joined today by Imi. Hiya. Uh, Imi's one of our current students uh, and Imi's going to be telling us about some maths. Uh, also joining us today, we're joined by you. Uh, so hello to Anaya and Raphael, Alfie and an anonymous person. And I can just see Zach's here as well. Uh, and Abigail, people are joining in chat. Uh, which is appearing on stream underneath us. Uh, there's a little bit of lag in between chat messages and them appearing back on the screen. Uh, but if you're saying hi in the chat at the moment, like Tia just did, hi Tia, <laughs> then it will at some point appear on screen and we'll uh, be able to see it. <laughs> if you want to join in with that chat, we're over at www.slido.com forward slash OOMC. There's a link uh, on screen at the bottom there. Hello to uh, Cicero as well over there. Um, I hope you're having a good day, everyone. Hi to Rebecca. Um, I hope you've had a good week since I saw you last. Um, I've had a haircut. I'm trying to look more like the uh, the picture that people made. Look, I've got it here. Uh, I'm trying to look more like the picture that people made of uh, the Desmos version. I've got a switch as well, so that if I if my face is getting tired, I can just switch to have it have it uh, have it there, and then. Um, then that that just that just gives me a way to relax my face in between, uh, and also when I when I cut back again, the haircut makes it more consistent. Uh, that was a Desmos picture that people drew uh, last week. Uh, if you want to see that episode, it's available on the Maths Club website, <laughs> which is also linked in here and in the YouTube description, and it's possibly how you found us. Hi to Dot and Beth and Anonymous and Molly is here, and I missed Romanajan and Harriet. And Dan is here too. <laughs> Great to have you all with us. Um, hello everyone. I should have said, you can be anonymous in the chat below. Uh, you can set your name to a famous mathematician if you like. Um, or you can uh, set your name to your own name if you want to. Um, anonymous people. I like to pretend that all the anonymous people are the same person. Uh, <laughs> maybe that's just me. Uh, coming up today, um, we have got distance learning. I'm very pleased with this joke. Uh, distance learning, uh, because we're learning at a distance, and we're learning about distances. I've explained the joke, there we go. Uh, <laughs> chat's even better if I explain it right. Oh, chat on the stream's not updating. There we go. Fixed. Thank you. Uh, distance learning, also coming up. Yeah, some people didn't, say, didn't see their hellos appear on the screen. Oh. Uh, distance learning, also coming up. Maybe more dice? If we've got time, I've got more facts about dice. Dice have been in 50% of the episodes so far, so <laughs> we're two for two on talking about dice. Um, and uh, say hi please to Zimu and Zornik, uh who are new first time people helping out in the chat. Um, they're moderating chat uh, to make sure that people are friendly and nice. Uh, please keep it civil in the chat. Uh, Zimu and Zornik are helping out. Uh, and they're also current Oxford students <laughs> doing maths courses. Um, so if you want to talk to them, uh, then they are new and here as well. Oh, and I forgot to put on the slide, but Zakai is here as well. Uh, you've met Zakai before, uh, if you've come to Maths Club stuff before. Uh, Zakai is also here, so you can say uh, hello to them as well if you want to. <laughs> Imi says hi to all of those people too, I guess. <laughs> cool, further reading is posted each week um, on Friday, if I remember to post it on Friday. Uh, over on the Maths Club website, uh, which is at www.maths.ox.ac.uk slash r slash club. Um, and if you go there on Friday at some point or over the weekend, you can find more resources related to what we've been talking about on the live stream, more stuff like that, more things we think you might uh, like. Oh, people are saying hello. People are saying hello to people in, in the moderation as well. We're current students, maybe one day. Uh, some of this year's chat moderators are people who watched the show uh, a couple of years ago, or watched a similar show a couple of years ago, so it is kind of cute that we've got people who've done the whole whole journey. <laughs> I guess the whole journey would be you end up end up being me, where you're also <laughs> hosting the thing. Okay. <laughs> right. Uh, talking of going full circle and finding out how far you've come. Uh, do you like that link? That was no, I didn't plan That's that. That's smooth. That's smooth. great. Yeah. Speaking of, uh, <laughs> I'm going to hand over to Immy. Uh, Immy, what are we doing today? Um, what maths have you got? Um, I, before the maths, I'm so I didn't know that dice were a recurring theme. Otherwise, I have little um, 
uh, D20 earrings that I would have worn if I'd have known. But I'm sorry that my earring choice is so lacking today. Um, yeah, the actual maths I'm going to be teaching today is we're going to be doing a little bit of stuff on metrics. Um, so we're going to be trying to figure out how we define distance, like what definition of distance we can give. Uh, mathematicians call these metrics. Um, and then we're going to be seeing, with this definition, what weird, funky, strange stuff still fits our definition but doesn't feel like the distance we all know and potentially love. Um, so we're going to be writing distance like this. We're going to be putting D of AB, and that's just meaning the distance between A and B. So if I had a point A and a point B, then the distance here is going to be written as DAB. So that's just to get our boring notation out of the way. So when we're talking about distance, we're going to give three criteria. So of these three criteria, our first one is if the distance between A and B is zero, then we need A and B to be the same number. This makes a lot of sense. If the distance, if you're traveling from point A to point B, and they're not the same point, we want that distance to be not zero. I mean, we are traveling somewhere, and therefore we want that to be a distance. And if we are going from one point to itself, we want that to have a distance of zero. Um, if you're a notation nerd like myself and you like writing notes that are efficient and whatever, we're going to use this symbol. Um, and if we want to be nerds about it, I'll just write for you here uh, the notation of that. Uh, this is saying I spelled notation wrong, but we're going to leave it because we're mathematicians. That's okay. Uh, this sign here means if and only if, which is often also written like that. And only if. Uh, and so if I had if and only if A, sorry, if we had A, if and only if B, uh, that means if A also B, and if not B, sorry, if not A, then not B, and vice versa. Uh, and if you want to be like a super mega nerd about it, um, then you might want to look into something called uh, equivalence relations, uh, which if and only if is. So it means A is always going to be if and only if A. You can think about that and check that makes sense in your head. Uh, if we've got if and only if, sorry, A if and only if B, then that means we will in fact have, sorry, my fingers will let me move across uh, that will give us b if and only if a and it means if we've got a if and only if b b if and only if c then that'll give us a if and only if c chat, that's chat, just some notation fun chat have also suggested um uh, chat have also suggested three lines together for if and only if to mean equivalent i think i'm always surprised uh, when people can type math symbols in chat but ali's found a way yeah. <laughs> uh, like that yeah, it's like equivalence. Another way of looking at it. Okay, cool. So back to actually what we're supposed to be doing. Um, <laughs> I just wanted a nerdy little detour to talk about notation. Um, so our criteria. We've got if it's the same point, it's got to be a distance of zero. And if it's a different point, it can't be a distance of zero. Uh, our second criteria is that um, if the distance between A and B has to equal the distance between B and A. So that feels pretty self-explanatory. It's just that it's not directional, um, which is unlike vectors, which hopefully you may have seen in school. So it just means it's not like there's one route you can take that takes you one distance and the way back takes you a different distance. Distance there and back have to be the same. Is that okay? Sure. I guess we're, we're doing positive distances, right? Is that one of our things? Yeah, they're all positive numbers for our distances between things. So no kind of yeah. negative numbers for the opposite. Just just use the positive distance, number for the distance. Yes, yeah. That's in, we have like a little notation thing that defines distance as like a function uh, where you put in whatever you've got and then right. it should give you out between zero and one. So yeah, I should write that as a, yeah. I'll write that as a 2.5 criteria. Ooh. <laughs> in there initial three, uh, 2.5 criteria. It's always positive. Um, and then for our third criteria, we've got a funky little thing called the triangle inequality. Uh, and the triangle inequality is a search. I'm going to write it out, and then I'll walk us through and explain it. So I 
notice this triangle inequality triangle inequality and it is the distance between a and c always needs to be less than or equal to the distance between a and b plus the distance between b and c it's the triangle inequality so i'm just gonna give you a sec to like have a look at that and think about what that might mean so you can grab your head around it before we jump into doing it in some classical euclidean geometry yeah i wonder if chat can i wonder if chat can turn that triangle inequality statement into words i'm saying into words because chat's really mm -hmm. good at typing words um, <laughs> So it says something about the distance A to C and something about the sum of the distances from A to B and B to C. Is there a way to say that in words? SV says, what, do I, what did I miss? Uh, SV missed a... We've had three criteria that make something a metric. Ah, oh, thank you. Here they are. Uh, your, distance, your distance function should be a positive real number and it should only be zero if the points are the same. It should be uh, symmetric if you swap the two points around. Uh, and it should do the triangle inequality, which we're trying to put into words. Oh, people have remembered that the triangle inequality is in a recent mat question, but we've we don't talk about the mat here. We don't we don't we don't talk about that here. I would love <laughs> to not talk about the mat. Yeah. We've we've learned not to talk about the mat, mats. Um, oh, Raphael's got an interpretation with triangles. Beth's got a, a similar interpretation with triangles. No triangle side can be longer than some of the other two sides. People have picked up on the triangle in the triangle inequality. Um, Amelia says distance of a hypotenuse, and I know mm -hmm. I think that's the same sort of idea, isn't it? The other side of other side of the triangle. I guess it doesn't have to be a right angle triangle, but then I don't have words for the different sides of a not right angle triangle, so I know what Amelia means. Um, so, uh, I like an anonymous person has come in and said the shortest distance between two points is travelling directly there. In every case, I quite like that. There's like a little story. Yeah. Um, um, that's always how I explain. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, Harriet's got the right angle triangle interpretation as well. There's sort of, I think it's also even for not right angle triangles, uh, Harriet and also I think Amelia are thinking about right angle triangles. You can actually write it down. For a right angle triangle, you can write it down and it tells you something about cosine and sine, which is quite nice, I think. Um, yeah, shortest distance between two points. Oh, here's another, uh, something about straight lines. Yeah, okay. Cool. We've got some interpretations. Thank you, chat. Um, sorry, I interrupted Amy. <laughs> No, no, no. Yeah, no, that's cool. So someone put it as like going directly, which is exactly what I have written down in my notes, um, is that, again, going directly is always going to be shorter or the same as going via another point. So if we call that R and that no, and we go Q and P, uh, then R is always going to be less than or equal to D plus Q. Um, and yeah, I, I refer to this as uh, there is no shorter root because that's the best way of saying it with the less than or equal to sign there's no shorter root directly so if you think about this in like real life if you think about the idea of like cutting corners that's exactly the same concept so if i was telling you to like walk along this path here and you saw that you know over here was like a nice little i'm just trying to find a green pen oh my green pen's not showing up but do I have a green Oof. pen to draw some grass for you? I don't, but you can accept this nice, strange orange grass. Um, you you instantly, like, intrinsically know the shortest way to get from there to there is just going to be cutting that corner, walking along that grass instead of going across the point. And that's the exact same as, that's what the triangle inequality is all about. So those are our criteria for direction. Yeah, I think a good def we've got a good working definition now. Those three, maybe three and a half, because I added one in, sorry, three and a half requirements <laughs> yeah. for being a metric. Um, yeah. And it seems pretty normal. Like, I think we've all agreed those are things that distance just does in, in uh, like, size of a triangle, in, like, uh, the classical, classical thing. And your pictures for classical Euclidean geometry seems to make sense. Um, yeah. yeah. Okay. Metrics. Cool. They've got some properties. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Before we get fun and funky, uh, we need to first... Sorry, Immy, I think I lost your sound for a moment there. Oh, no, I think I've lost Immy. Yeah. Yep, lost Immy. Got Immy back again. Getting Immy back. <laughs> Hello? Hello. 
Hello, We're that's good. my Wi-Fi second time. Lost Wi-Fi, but got back in again. Got it back again. Oh, that's more than we can ask for on these. On these, back again. Um, okay. What Have is? we got me back again? Am we're I back. okay? We're good. <laughs> okay. So we need to know what we're measuring this distance on. Uh, which just seems a little bit obvious, but when we get a bit funkier later down the line, uh, it becomes quite necessary. Uh, so what were we measuring this distance on? Uh, and for this, we're going to talk about. We're going to call it a set. So you might call it a set X. Um, and a set in maths just means any collection of numbers. Um, or really, when we say numbers, we kind of just mean like maths objects. So we're looking for like any collection of these as a set. So to get some examples going, uh, we might have R, which means the reals. Uh, we might be going between like zero and infinity, we might specify. Um, and again, just a little notation point for you here. Uh, these brackets mean uh, from A to B on the number line inclusive. So that means uh, less than two. Uh, and the little round brackets mean X. Yeah, A to B on your number line. This is um, another but, nota notation nerd segment, I think. <laughs> Different but, yeah. ways to write regions of regions of numbers. Yeah, just a little, just a little bit of notation. Again, if you <laughs> care about notation the same way as I do. Um, and then the reals, you might also see me write something like r to the two. So that just means like our classic x and y. We've got two coordinates, and they're both made out of real numbers. Real numbers just being like. 0, minus 14, 3, pi, 11.2, you know, numbers on a number line. Um, and this means numbers on two number lines or an axis. Um, and this can go all the way up to uh, n amounts, um, n amount of dimensions. I've been told you guys really like lots of dimensions. We will be going up to lots of dimensions. I told Amy um, that you're always, always keen to go to n dimensions. So we're going to n dimensions today. Um, we're going to higher, dimen higher dimensional distances, if that's all right with you, people in chat. Um. <laughs> We've also got uh, n, which is like the natural numbers. So that means like 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Um, and yeah, just things like that. So that's what we're going to be measuring our distance on, uh, which is just an important thing to note. So we've got what our distance means. And we've got what we're measuring our distance on, some kind of set. So now let's get measuring distances. So let's do the most classic example. Just start with a little graph, if you'll let me. A little, a little set of axes. Right. I know, look at me go. Using my pens. <laughs> Jeez, it's very impressive, my one note abilities. Um, what I get up to. Okay, so if we go from a point A to a point B, uh, and let's say that A is written as point A1, A2 is the coordinates of A, and let's say B is the point B1, B2 are the coordinates of B. Can anyone try and give me what they think we might be measuring this distance as? So from this, what do they, what do we think D of A, B equals? Okay. So we've got points that are in, points that are in 2D space. And you said, maybe you write that R squared. Um, I guess the, yeah, the exponent there is the number of dimensions. So it's R squared, which means that each of these numbers have got two components, like a vector. What's the yeah. distance between those two things? Uh, and I'm going to give chat a moment to type things. Uh, while chat's typing, Dan would like to know what sort of tablet you're using. <laughs> um, this is, so on the DSA, which is Disabled Students Allowance, they bought me a swanky laptop <gasps> that like folds in half. I know, it's a called a Inspiron. Oh, I know Del? that. Fancy Del, Del, Fancy Del thing. Um, right. But I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend <gasps> it because I had to buy a pen that specifically only works for Dell, and I thought that was cheeky of them. So, 
Uh, it's up to you. Any I excuse to reinvent that. the pen. Um, people in chat, so Matt, oh, and Amelia, and yeah, 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 and use up. Actually, I. They're doing really well, um, Emily and Alfie and uh, Amelia. I've realised as their submissions come in, I've realised it's incredibly difficult to type that distance into chat. Sorry, chat. Oh, oh, they're doing yeah. so well because it's got square roots in. Oh, I feel so sorry for everyone. Some people have just put the word Pythagoras, which I have a lot of empathy for because <laughs> Pythagoras you can type on a regular keyboard, uh, even if you don't have a fancy laptop. Um, <laughs> so, if, you so wanna, got... if you want typing recommendations, I would always write like that. Mimi's square root. Yeah, people have got people have got um either people are doing root as the function or screw it as the function. Root. Screw yeah. it is used by some other software as well for oh, and Molly's got one of those keyboards that lets you do the little subscripts as well. So mm, right, oh, okay. No. Keyboard chat over. Um <laughs> people are t people are writing down Pythagoras as a as a way to measure the distance yeah. between those two points. Looks good. Classic bit of Pythag. Um we're gonna go so like this point here this is gonna be your I'm just checking I'm getting it right this will be b1 this will be a1 and this here is gonna be b2 and this is gonna be a2 making this distance if we zoom on into my little graph this distance could be a2 minus b. this is gonna be b1 minus a1 so if we want the distance Cheeky bit of Pythag, classic. We're going to get square root, as we said above, a1 minus b1 squared, and you can put them in any order, a2 minus b2 squared, squared. Ooh, that's where we did. Yeah, that's your classic bit of, B, uh, the classic bit of Pythag to get you there. Um, now we call this the d2 metric on r squared. So this whole space, this axis space, uh, is called r squared. And we call this the D2 metric, the two denoting how many dimensions there are. Uh, and it's also like in words called the Euclidean metric, the Euclidean <laughs> metric. Normally stumbling over words. Normally being not, can't say words, can't do numbers. Um, so now I feel this is the part that potentially you guys are going to be vaguely excited for. Can we generalize this from two dimensions into n dimensions um i'm wondering again this is going to be a hard one to type into chat in terms of what it ends up looking like I, um i'm not saying i'm not trying to say that chat's predictable or maybe we're predictable but um <laughs> chat has while you were saying that someone put in chat too basic for me do n dimensions please um so <laughs> even while you're doing n dimensions they're asking for n dimensions uh, and somebody else well, has put your um somebody else has put the Somebody else unprompted put in a, a formula in there. It's a lot of typing, isn't it? Should we just copy their answer? Feel bad. Go on, go. Uh, Rebecca's got Rebecca's. Uh, people people who like Python are off and away. Import math <laughs> semicolon. Oh, semicolon. Hypots open bracket close bracket. Of I guess of your vectors. Raphael's had a go at typing it all. Right. Turns out we've given them loads of typing to do while they're busy typing. Um, so Pythagoras is a thing you can do in n dimensions as well. Let's not write it on the screen. Um, I like this. We've given them a task to do, and then I don't think we should actually try and write it all down. Yeah, math dot screw it. People, people, people like Python apparently. Um, <laughs> my calculator's got a button for this. I've got a, a weird calculator that's a button for converting to the, the hypotenuse of a vector. Uh, and now people are talking about Python weirdness. Um, cool. <laughs> so there's a way to go to n dimensions, which we thought you'd like. Yeah. Yeah, so we just generalize it out to... Um, oh, that pen is way too thick. Um, it's very red. Just generalize it out to... Um, sorry, I'm just trying to make sure you can see what I'm writing. Um, yes, we go root of the sum n of i equals 1 of ai minus bi squared. So this is our Euclidean metric just as before. Just as before, but now we are on r to the n, so n of dimensions. Um, and again, just a bit of notation uh, in case we're not sure. 
because I know I just in every class and I'm like, wait, what does this symbol mean again? Uh, hence all the notation explanation. I'm trying to look out for people who are like me. Uh, you sum all the equations, that's what this means, uh, with I, and then you just set it as one to begin with, that's what that one means, and then two. I'm very happy with the we do a little series comment. I think there's some notation in there as well. It's, it's fantastic. Doing a lot of notation. <laughs> Yeah, it's for adding things, right? No chance. No chance. People are going to type this with the with the three stacked together thing in the chat as well. Although maybe they're having a go. Uh, cool, Pythag in higher dimensions. Just that that's easy to generalize. Well, for, vaguely easy to generalize to higher dimensions, which is nice. Um, somebody asked about ca complex numbers. Um, complex numbers are just like a bit like R two in the sense of distances. So yeah, we got complex numbers yeah. in here. Yeah, because complex numbers are... Oh, I keep losing you. Just lost you a little bit again. Am I getting Amy back? Still at the board? Maths, notation. Ah, Wi-Fi was really good during the practice session. No. <laughs> you're back. <laughs> Are we back? Yep, you're back. <laughs> Oh, Wi-Fi so, was so, so good sorry. yesterday. Um, <laughs> I know, I know. I knew this would happen. I just pray that it freezes on not me mid, like, excused explanation. Um, Let's go. We've got other metrics, right? We've got other metrics to show them. Because everything we've yes. done so far, you know, triangles and talking about the edges and Pythagoras, it's all been, you know, very, like, distances that we've, yeah. distances we know. Yeah. Is that it? Is that all we've got? Is that everything that's happened? No, we've got... <laughs> no, so now we're going to look the weird stuff um, that seems like it shouldn't fit, but it does. So we're going to start off, I'm going to zoom the way in. Um, we're going to start off with something called the discrete metric. So I'm going to write it out for you, let you have a think about it, um, and then we're going to talk about some of the consequences of it. So this can be applied on any set. Uh, for those who are keeping track of what sets we're applying these metrics on. Um, and this is just defined as D of AB equals one of these, which is like a split up equation, zero when A equals B, and one when A doesn't equal B. Wait, so that, that's it? That's the whole, that's the whole metric? There's no square root that's in your the, squaring? That's There's the no, whole metric. It just says that it's zero if the points, if your two points are the same, distance zero, that was one of the rules, wasn't it, for being a distance? Yep. And then any other distance between two points, just say that's one. Yeah. That, and that's that it. It's almost as if you said to someone, it's the most basic way of thinking about distance. And they were like, if you go somewhere, you have in fact gone somewhere. And that's all they wanted. That's all they care about measuring. Um, I suppose it, that's sort of consistent. I can see that it does the zero thing. It's zero if and only if the points are the same. And I can see that it's symmetric in the way that well, you're just going to say one, whether I say A to B or I say B to A. It's almost not worth asking. Um, does it do the triangle yeah. inequality? So if we had uh, distance from A to C, this is the triangle inequality, just in case we have forgotten. Uh, plus distance from B to C. Uh, these are either going to be one or zero, and this is either going to be uh, sorry, this is going to be, so it, the way we've made is if this is going to be 1, and then it, the only way would be if these were both 0, that we'd break mm. this. But if those were both 0, then they're all the same point, and therefore A and C are the same point, and we've broken what we're trying to do. Right, okay, some special cases, but normally that inequality is just 1 is less than 2, right, for almost any choice of A, B, and C. 1 is exactly. less than 2, welcome to the Oxford Online Math Club. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That'll be and this all just works. Awesome. Yep. My handwriting's got extremely scrappy, I'm not sure why. I need to zoom in more, get my pens looking nice. Um, but if you just have a think about it like that, that's way more. And then what I was trying to show earlier with the zeros thing was if we try and break it, can we? And the answer is no, we cannot. Um, which is my favourite way to go about proofs in maths is... <laughs> Physically, can I break this? Oh, no, I cannot. So that, you've drawn 
you've drawn that. That's a general triangle. It's got three different points, A, B, and C, but all yep. the sides are one because of how the discrete metric works. There's a different definition of distance, which says, oh, yeah, that that's an equilateral triangle because all the sides are the yeah. same length. <laughs> Yeah, so that's like the first point about the screen metrics that I think is really funky, is that any three points form an equilateral triangle. Uh, form an equal, I'm going to spell this wrong. Wait, let me check my notes to make sure I don't spell it wrong. Equilateral. <laughs> so all triangles are equilateral triangles with this distance, which is super weird. Um, it does genuinely follow all of our um, all of our rules. Um, yeah, if you want to check our rules from earlier, um, I can zoom up to them. We can have a double check. Um, cool. Okay, what else? What else can we say about this metric? So it's sort of right. All distances yeah. are one. <laughs> yeah. So we've got all distances are one. Uh, and then also like, uh, if you were going to the shops and then back, you're always travelling a distance of two, no matter where. No matter where the shops are, right? It's because it's one to get to the shops, and then one to get back again. Yeah, unless you dropped your bags and had to stop to pick them up, uh, which creates a stop on your journey, and therefore you're travelling to the shops, you're travelling back a bit, stopping, and then travelling back a bit more, which means there's three steps taking place, and therefore the distance has just gone up. Uh, here we go. Uh, no, that's that. And then if you want to think less real world, like I always do as a pure mathematician, um, and want to get some weird shapes going, uh, we can think about what does this mean for circles? So if we have, a, if I get us up a nice little, nice little set of axes as well, and I said I wanted to draw a circle of radius uh, one around this point, well, literally, every point in this space is going to be at a distance of one. Literally the entire space is going to be at a distance of one. So this would just look like a big coloured in space. Because a but circle is a circle is all the other points that are the dis a distance of radius one away from the point. And for the discrete metric, you've changed what distance means so that that's everything. <laughs> Exactly. So circle of radius one is just all points, all other points, sorry, I should say. And then if I wanted to get a circle of radius two, that can't exist because the distance we have is it's either going to be one or we have two steps involved and that's how we sum up distances. other than just the different ones, like all the different points taken out for the center. So no other circle radiuses. No other circles. Yep. So you sort of can't do, you can't do any of that GCSE circle geometry in the discrete metric yep. really, because your circles are very, very different in, if you're using the discrete metric. So maybe this is a sort of cunning trick to avoid doing GCSE questions to say, well, I don't know, you said distance, but mm, I was thinking about the different sort of distance where circles look like that. <laughs> Maybe a way to get so. out. Um, cool. Um, yeah. I'm not sure how people feel about it. Um, so people are asking why are all the distances one? I think it's just, just to clarify again, this is just a different definition of uh, what distance could be. Different way of measuring distances between two points. Mathematicians are often interested in this kind of abstract question of given my definitions of what, um, given, my, um, given my rules about what a metric is that we put down at the top, given those rules, 
what things fit this outline? What things fit all of those rules? If it fits those rules, it's a bit like Pythagoras. It's a bit like the normal distance that we use. Um, here, what's, what are some other things we can think of that satisfy those rules? Um, thinking like that's helpful because if you solve stuff for the abstract general solve it for all of your metrics, then it's true for Pythagoras and it's also true for this metric and it's also true for Hamming metrics and pa Manhattan metrics and other non-Euclidean metrics that people have been talking about in chat as well. Um, you can prove things about all of these weird and wonderful things all at the same time. Uh, chat's a little bit behind. Uh, circle of radius zero maybe exists with just a just a dot. Um, oh yeah, would just be a point. Yeah, maybe. Uh, people earlier were a bit worried about degenerate triangles, and I feel like they're going to be a bit worried about circles of radius zero. Some of these things are a bit degenerate, aren't they? Um, I'm not even sure if that... Ha! Radius is one. Cool. Okay. So that's one thing that I think is slightly weird. I'm trying to take the Trying to take the temperature of the room in chat. I think people have basically accepted that as a weird different definition of distance. Nobody okay, seems to be that cross with us. Um, okay, can we get weirder then? Let's get weirder. <laughs> so the next one, uh, we call it the sup matrix. Uh, no, we're going to try and make some kind of funny joke because that would be true. Um, and we write that as, it's got a little sign, it's got a little infinity sign, is how we like note it if you care about how the big boys do it um and we call that we say that that is the max of the absolute difference between ai and bi so first things first i just want to note that the i here will be the same so you can have like a2 minus P4. So that that is not that is not allowed uh, under this definition. It has to be going the same direction. Uh, and max, just again, as you think, means the biggest. Um, the biggest what you might ask, because this is not necessarily the clear. Um, and I say it's the biggest absolute, which just means not negative. Um, we make sure it's not negativized. Uh, absolute difference. So I might try absolute means positive. Uh, absolute difference in any one dimension. So if we just think about it, I'm sorry, in two dimensions to begin with, um, and we picture it with, once again, our delightful little set of axes, um, then what we're thinking about is if we've got two points here and here, it's looking at this distance and it's the defining the distance between those points. And we're defining this distance between the points as A or B. So we call that the maximum of the gap. So again, I'll just give you a little second to have a little think about that, and then we'll look at some of the consequences of that. There's a different one looking at um, what happens. So you've got your, your vector, and instead of doing this Pythagoras thing for the distance, the maximum <laughs> difference between components that match up. So you take the A1 and the B1 and look at the absolute difference of A2 and the B2 and look at the absolute difference. Add them up. Uh, Emily's got a really good question. I mean, we're having a discussion about... Um, oh, sorry. Emily's got a really good question. Um, we've been talking about the diameter of that cir the circle that we just had where it was almost all space. Somebody was wondering about the diameter. It kind of feels like the diameter should be two because it feels like it should be twice the radius. But the discrete metric says that that distance from any two points on the circumference of our circle 
is 1, <laughs> because the discrete metric wants almost everything to be distance 1. So I think yep. that's an example of a circle where the diameter is not twice the radius, because it's just 1 again. Um, I had to make a choice there whether I was going to throw away the idea of diameter being twice the radius, or if I was going to throw away the idea of, no really, all the distances are 1. The diameter is 1 as, as, one as well. How can that be a circle, right? It does some of the things that a circle should do. I suppose I should define a circle, right? Uh, it does some what it does. It does exactly one of the things that a circle should do. Be the points that are all the same distance from a from a center. It doesn't do any of the other things that a circle should do. <laughs> uh, sorry, I interrupted. Um, what was the? No, uh, okay. I was just going to note here that when I got here. Um, like, well, it's the list of A1, A2, AI, and B equals B1, B2, B3, AI. That makes sense. So, there are two vectors, and obviously, if you only have two coordinates, like here, then you're just going to have, uh, in fact, I should not pull that max A and B. I should make that pretty easy. Oh, I see. Okay. So this is looking at all of the components of A and B, finding yeah. the biggest absolute difference. I guess we're trying to think maybe about um, what this looks like or what it feels like if this is our definition of distance now. So new one, new definition of distance. I suppose again, this this is only going to be zero if the points are the same and it's symmetric between A and B and B and A. Um, hi, Raf. Um, so what are we trying to do? So are we just having a think about the metric? Do you want me to start talking about some funky things to do with it? Uh, I don't know. So someone in chat has suggested that maybe the circles in this one might turn out to be squares. Um, I don't know how they've how they've got there, or whether they've seen something like this before. Um, but I think something like that to do with it's to do with the bounds, isn't it, on where the thing is? Do you want to tell them about what circles look like with this metric? Yeah, absolutely. So you are right, and they are going to look like squares. Um, so if we imagine it, if we start at this point, um, and we're, if let's say we're doing like a circle of radius three, we want. If we go up from here three, this point obviously the max distance is going to be three, and further down as well. Three. And the same in this direction. That's then going to be you know because that's. We're comparing, so whatever point we're picking in comparison, I just realized a way I can say this way clearer. If we're looking at our radius, if we're looking at our radius, we're picking a point to compare at this distance, and we're looking at this distance, and we're picking which one is bigger and saying that's the distance. Yeah? Like I was saying up here with when it was on axes. And so for a circle, all the way up to the square. Up until this point, this distance here starts being more than three. The distance we're going to define it as is three. So to explain that again, from the radius, we're looking at which is the biggest direction, going straight across or straight up. Whichever one's biggest, we're calling that the distance. And we're looking for a distance of three. So along here, this distance going along to this point is going to be more than going up. I might redraw it to get a bit of a clearer diagram going. It's okay. It's quite a tricky problem because Again, this metric involves lots of point. absolute value signs, and absolute value signs are annoying. Um, it involves thinking quite carefully about positive and negative sides of things. I mean, which one's bigger because we're taking the maximum of all of these differences? Yeah, I think you get that square, don't you? Ooh. And there's a description in words in chat as well. Um, you could think of it as moving in every direction at the same rate. 
uh, until you arrive to get a feel of how far it is and then the largest difference out of those pairs of points so the largest difference I suppose if you ooh, if you start at one point and you grow out in every coordinate at once and you take the last one to get there you're taking the maximum of all of the distances differences between the absolute values of the coordinates <laughs> absolute values of the differences or something um, then I think that gives you uh, how far apart things are with this weird yeah, metric if from each point Growing out, it's where those lines meet, and then whichever one's longest. So yeah, I'm completely with you. So here again, this line, this distance is going to be shorter, and therefore we're still going to be hitting three at these points until we hit up here when this is a length of three. As soon as we get up here, like the point here, this distance that's called four will be bigger. This distance of three, which is again looking from this purple point, the radius. And therefore, this is going to be outside of our circle. So our circle, like you said, is going to look like a square. That's brilliant. However, I'm going to challenge you and say, if I get a get another beautiful pair of axes, just to give us some reference. And on that beautiful pair of axes, I draw this square. Ooh. It's a square at an angle. Is that still a circle? Is my question. I did say I was going to challenge you, though. <laughs> so I, I, feel, are those I feel quite evil. <laughs> I feel like I should be given this power. So can you scroll up just a tiny bit so we've got the definition of the distance on the board as well? Is it possible to get all of that on the board at once? Yeah. See all my messy scribbles. So we've got this shape. This feels like, you know, we just had, I think this convincing argument that this big square on the bottom left, uh, all of the points around the outside of that big square on the bottom left are the same distance from the purple point in the middle. We're, we're calling that a circle as shorthand. Maybe you're not happy with that, but we're calling that a circle, uh, a, cir a circle, I suppose. Um, but perhaps you prefer to say that all the points around the outside of that big square on the bottom left are the same distance from the purple point. The top point on the top right, Alfie says in chat, why is it not square root three squared plus three squared? Because we've changed what distance means. This is quite mind bending, isn't it? We've changed what distance means so that that top on the point, top right corner of the square, on the corner that Alfie's worried about, is no longer, we're no longer calling that a distance of square root three squared plus three squared. We're saying, take the difference in the coordinates and take the maximum. And here it's across three and up three. The maximum of those is three. So there's this weird effect of changing your definition of distance that it means that what well, you might have thought conventionally your arguments about Pythagoras for the for the for the side lengths of a triangle um, relies on this normal sense of distance. But we can come up with other bizarre sorts of distance uh, to do with taking this maximum of the difference between coordinates, for example. Um, so if that's square, the hypotenuse of the radius and the side of the square. Yeah, so people are worried a bit about the um people are worried about the hypotenuse of. Yeah, this is an anonymous anonymous question, I think worried about the same thing. Um taking the hypotenuse of the radius and the side of the square. Um I suppose this is a world where right angled triangles have the hypotenuse of equal length to one of the sides if the right angle triangle lines up with the axes. <laughs> Thinking on my feet. Um, this distance is really weird. It doesn't do some of the things that Pythagoras does. It does the things in the definition of a metric at the top um, and not all of the other things that Pythagoras does. Um, if you're willing to change your definition of distance then lots of the things we previously had are no longer true. For example, um, somebody in chat is convinced that if you um, wrote, if you tilt this, it's not, it's not okay. That's not a circle in quote marks anymore. Um, do you want to explain why? <laughs> yeah, I'd love to. Um, so again, here this works because we were going parallel to the axes about like AI and BI. 
characters go in relation to whatever our set of axes are. So if we're going, if we're saying which is the biggest weight, like which is the biggest, jump, therefore the jumps need to go along the axes as we've just defined it. So when we get our tilty square, the distance from two points on it may just be, will be, sorry, the distance from that point to the radius isn't necessarily going to be what we wanted it to be, isn't necessarily going to be the radius. I'm just checking if you can see my screen as I'm writing. So the distance here is going to be which is the biggest out of these two. And neither of these two link up with the point. So here, this is still going to be our nice little distance of three like we wanted. But going along this way and then down to get to this point, these are going to be smaller than three. Yeah. And therefore, this isn't going to work as a circle. So to whoever gave, have I put a weird setting on? Yes, I have. That is not a weird setting, this. Please stop doing ink to shape. It's like you're trying to draw a circle, no? And I'm like, no, I'm trying to write the word circle, friend. Um, there you go, uh, oh, not a circle. There you go. That is not a circle. However, this is a circle under our definition. The, so whoever said circles are squares, you are so, so nearly right. You just have to give it a little caveat um, of under the supreme metric circles are squares parallel to the axes yeah while you're writing this metric's super weird by looking at the coordinates and just picking out the difference between the ab the maximum value of the absolute values of the difference between the coordinates somehow this one it cares whether you're lined up with the axes or not um the other ones that we looked at um were had some rotational symmetry to them so regular Pythagoras has that, you can rotate a line and its length stays the same. Um, uh, and the discrete metric sort of did that too, because everything was one. Um, uh, here, this is uh, it's sort of a bit weird. If you rotate something in the conventional sense, to get to that tilted square maybe, um, then it's not, uh, it's no longer, that doesn't preserve distance anymore. Um, that you don't have the same same numbers after same numbers afterwards for the distances. It kind of cares where the stuff's lined up with the axes or not. Uh, that could be useful if you're trying to detect whether things are lined up with the axes. So you throw something like this at them. Uh, kind of my favourite thing about this is like one of my favourite areas of maths. Kind of because it's not useful like <laughs> my kind of favorite thing about it is it's just it's just like people see mathematics as this very like prim and proper uh, done a certain way logical we get good outcomes like harsh subjects and i like that now we've got silly shapes that aren't working how they're meant to and like that to me is is just absolutely the best part of maths um it's just breaking it and doing silly things with it because um, you can and that's the fun of numbers so, yeah we've got i've got one final metric to show um and it is extremely weird are we okay to move on to that yeah let's go i'm answering a question in chat about where does this come from and how do we come up with metrics to do the quick <laughs> quick history people were trying to prove facts about triangles Turns out the facts they were trying to prove weren't true in all metrics. Uh, so somehow the thing they were trying to prove, they needed to add in a condition to say, oh, if you're in the Pythagoras normal metric. Uh, there you go. More in further reading, I think. There you go. <laughs> um, so the last one we're going to do, I'm going to zoom way in to get my nice handwriting back, uh, is called the Tuadic metric. Uh, and this one we define on Z which is uh, the integers, uh, which just means our whole numbers uh, is the set we define this on. Again, if you've been keeping track of sets, that's like minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, and so on. Uh, and the two metric, metric, uh, we write out in words. There's words in maths, please don't panic. Um, so we say that the distance between A and B is going to equal one over two to the M 
where 2 to the m is the greatest power of 2. So the biggest thing that is a 2 to the m that divides a minus b. So that's the two adig metric. Wow. Um, so this is completely unexpected, I think. Um, this is somehow so weird, partly because it's defined on the, the whole numbers. We're not looking mm -hmm. at uh, co a coordinate system anymore. We're looking at the whole numbers, which you, you've seen before in, in prime number stuff. Um, yeah. This metric is something to do with the factors of the difference between the numbers? That's a bit yep. crazy. Also, it's ridiculous. Uh, but once again, my like, what I was thinking for, if you care to go away and be extra nerdy, you can check the triangle inequality holds on this. Um, it's a spoiler, it does, hence it's a metric. Um, but if we just think about this of like, I think about it on a timeline because we're doing integers. So that makes sense to my head. Um, so if we're going from, that's going to be a distance. Well, the difference is two and the greatest two to the end, that's going to be two. So that's a distance of a half. But then if we're going two to one, the greatest power of that is just going to be one. So that's going to be a distance of one. And then if we're going to eight, the greatest thing that, oh, if we're going to like 16, the greatest thing that divides that. I'm sorry, I'm trying to think of a, one that isn't doubled, what's eight times three? 24. <laughs> so then the biggest thing that divides, like the greatest power of two that divides 24 is eight. So it's one over eight. So that distance is an eight. But then to 23, there's nothing, there's no power of two that divides that. So it's going to be again a distance of one. And like we just end up with this absolute mess that makes no sense. Like, like as in, the point of this is that it makes no sense, but it works. If it works for how we define metrics, it just doesn't make any sense to how we're used to things and how we're used to the real world. It only exists in the brain, which is, again, one of my favorite parts of maths. But. And this is somehow relevant to number theory. We definitely don't have time to say what the number theory is, but it somehow measures, it puts things close together if their difference okay, the difference is a big number in the normal sense of big number, but if the difference is very, very even, yeah. I'm going to get away with the phrase very, very even. There's no number theory like sliding it. around. Um, if the difference is very, very even, then those numbers sort of are, are treated as being very close together um, because of that shared evenness in their difference, um, which is such a weird idea. <laughs> but that so is why satisfies the triangle inequality, which means that anything you can prove for a metric in general, these things that satisfy the conditions from the start of this live stream, um, anything you can prove about metrics, it's a massive field because it includes some pretty weird number theory, as well as all of the Pythagoras stuff that you learn in school, as well as high dimensions and complex numbers and everything else that we love. Um, I don't think we even want to get into just quite how weird the two addict metric is. Um, people are trying to work out I, circles. I just think of it as as if you took all the numbers off the number line or the grid or whatever and rearranged them like James was saying. Oh, I lost the ones or whatever together, and then you end up with like numbers re huddled or whatever instead Sorry, of ooh. their space now how they're meant to be. Lost you in the middle of the sentence. Sorry, could you say that again? No, it's okay. I think of it as like you're taking all the numbers and they're usually fixed on these points, the integers, they're fixed along it, and you like lift them all up like they're like building blocks as a kid, and you rearrange them by like what colour they are, and like the colour is the evenness or whatever, and you're instead putting it in rainbow gradient instead of colour gradient or whatever, like some kind of imaginary thing like that, until you get this rearranged number system, and that's what the two-addict metric does. Is it really... Matches them up. I think I've lost Emmy one more time. Sorry, me. <laughs> we did the whole practice session. And it was fine. distance between them. Yep. Okay. <laughs> it rearranges the distance between numbers. You were saying, and we're back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that one was rough. Sorry, because you were in the middle of a sentence, and it just ah. Oh. 
It's the Wi-Fi. Oh. Okay. Um, we've hit 60 o'clock, so I think we should wrap up. We've got defin definition of a distance on the on the board and in the further reading. Um, thank you very much, chat, for playing along. Um, thank you, Zakai, Zimu, and Sean for moderating chat. Thank you especially to Imi um, for showing his metric, metrics and totally weird other definitions of distance. Uh, turns out I don't have any... Uh, any time for dice, but maybe I'll throw some more dice stuff into the further reading just to keep the dice count up. Um, anything else we want to say uh, at the at the end? Uh, is there a distance? People are asking questions. We're going to talk to chat very quickly. Sorry. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Two people say thank you. Um, one person says, oh, "What about the distance between a point and itself?" I think we have to separately define that to be zero for the two addict metric. Is that right? Uh, well, I'd say, yeah, because zero, because then what divides zero? Oh, uh, yeah, let's not get into it. I would define yeah. it separately, I think. Does no, exactly, two to infinity yeah. define it? Um, <laughs> and then there's a big question. When's season four coming? So season three is 13 episodes, or 13 episodes in total, and then there's a two-week break, and then season four is coming. So you do the maths for when season four is coming. Uh, this is the 31st episode we've done, apparently. Uh, has there ever been one that was being aired, but has never been aired? Uh, no. <laughs> and is there a fandom or wiki? No, we don't have a wiki. Uh, yeah, so Rebecca asks, what can you prove about all metrics which satisfy rules 1 to 3? I think that's a really good question. Um, As in what's universal about them? Yeah. I've mentioned a couple of times that there's a strength there. Yeah, I think I think the whole point is that it's just those three things, and then you can do such a variety of different things. We use them at uni for, I'm trying to think, it was last term. What do we even use metric spaces for? We then define them, oh yeah, we then define them as like a whole space, and then like, like I was saying with reordering the number line with the two a dick, if you heard that, um, you kind of reimagine what the space would look like where this is what distance actually looks like and then you do a whole load of weird and funky shape stuff um yeah and you get and you get circles turning into lines and orbs that get projected in the air and all kinds of weird stuff so that's what we do with them okay <laughs> there is a course on metric spaces in i think the second year of the maths degree that proves some general material about metric spaces can't think of anything I can say on this stream about it. Um, and there's some chat about whether or not zero divides zero. So maybe we should talk about dividing stuff, but okay. I might take that one offline. I think it does. I think it's three times zero. And because it's three times zero, that means it's a multiple of zero. So I would say zero is a factor of zero. And I might die. I might, this is a very small hill that I might die on. Um, cool. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, thank you for watching. Um, we're back next week for more maths. Check, check the further reading. Thanks again to Immy. Thanks to people in chat. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on. Um, always, always a pleasure. And we're back. I can't find the button. <laughs> we're going to stay live until I find the button. Ah, <laughs> there we go. Um, we're back 5pm next week for another episode of the Oxford Online Maths Club. See you then. Bye.